Hello there, welcome back to the Auburn allotment. It is yet another beautiful day. We have been so blessed with some really, really lovely days recently. So I am back down the plot on plot 79 this time because I think it is time to do a plot tour of plot 79. Uh, this will be the first plot tour since the greenhouse has swapped around from uh, this green, this plot onto plot 12 and we've swapped the little one around onto here. So uh, there is some stuff to show you plus stuff is actually starting to grow now, which is really, really exciting. So um, yeah, I think we should just get on with it. I should probably say that when I get out there, uh, you might be able to hear quite a lot of background noise. That's because my plot neighbor is uh, just <laughs> tilling their plot with a petrol tiller, so it's a bit noisy, but I've got to get this done today because we are going on holiday this weekend for my birthday, and uh, this is the only opportunity I'm really gonna get to be able to film and edit this before we get set off. So. Um, yeah, let's get going and uh, I'll show you what's changed on Plot 79 in March. Here we are at the wildflower patch at the start of Plot 79. I'm just going to lift up the conifer which has fallen over. This is one of our little tiny Christmas trees from Christmas. Uh, we've decided to leave that down here since it's still alive. So the wildflower patch, yeah, starting to look a lot greener. Um, a few months ago this was looking quite brown and overgrown from last year. There's quite a lot of weeds popping up so there's definitely some uh, some bindweed there, some nettles, as well as some thistles and stuff. The bindweed we can try and get out, and the nettles are not so bad, we can usually get those out. Um, but it's looking pretty good, there's quite a lot of little seedlings in there now. There's a few little bits and bobs growing, so I'm not sure what these are, but these have got little blue flowers. So even if they're a weed, they're fine for now. Foxgloves are really starting to pick up now, there's a couple of really nice clumps of them around. The daffodils have just started to go over, only one of those actually flowered anyway, so not such a big deal. And we've actually now got our globe thistles in the ground as well, but they're yet to actually really do anything. Um, we've got some of our pots at the front here. They're looking absolutely glorious in this sunshine. So we've got some tulips, absolutely beautiful. We've learned recently that these close up at night, which are quite nice. And then the teeny tiny little tete-a-tete -tete type style uh, daffodils there as well. Some hyacinths in this one, they smell really nice. And there's also some little primulas or something in there as well. Polyanthus, that's what they are. Uh, some more tulips and then some grape hyacinths. And these have just recently come out and are looking absolutely beautiful alongside these tulips. So that in itself is absolutely lovely. Um, the, oh, some more tulips and some more daffodils here. There's a lot of stuff still. So we, although stuff is starting to grow and we are starting to use this plot a bit, and uh, so some stuff under there. This, it all still needs a good tidy, but we just haven't had the time with finding somewhere to live and moving and stuff. But we will get around to it eventually. The honeysuckle is really starting to take off. It's starting to look really good. So it's starting to send off some new shoots as well. So these are just from this year and it is starting to really bulk out and we're gonna try and train it, hopefully up the tree a little bit. There's quite a lot more growth down here as well. Hopefully we'll get some flowers off that this year. And then, we have our rose so this is i think a scrambling rose so we need to find a good place for that we haven't actually found anywhere for it yet because things have been moving around so much um, but that would be ideal up an arch or up a shed or something the foxgloves oh there's a really nice one down there um but these ones they are still alive the ones that survived when it fell um they they're doing okay but there's not a lot in there that's all meant to be full of foxgloves but it just didn't happen really Lots of rubbish, some compost that we've taken from the house um, since we're moving. We thought it'd be just best to leave it down here a bit where we can use it. And then I can go around to this bit of the wildflower patch and crouch down. And I can show you that there's a lot of little seedlings all around. Oh, just got stung. There's loads of them. So now I'm, I'm not expecting all of these to be flowers, but hopefully some of them will be self-seeded flowers from last year and hopefully there'll be some yellow rattle coming up as well because we've been sprinkling quite a lot of that dog barking nice um we've been sprinkling it all around and almost every day i've been watering this area as well to try and make sure that they've got the best chance of germinating after they were kept in the fridge so hopefully we'll get some of those come up which will help deal with some of the grass um, and then uh, we can just hand weed everything else out which will be hopefully a bit better this year or at least definitely next year anyway um, and then we've got a new cold frame here. It's just one of those cheapish ones from Wilco's. So it's just got, it hasn't got real glass in it or anything and it's quite light. And it's absolutely filthy as well from where it keeps getting rained on uh, and the, the mud keeps uh, spattering up the side of it. Um, but 
we feel like this is a really good place when this area is tidied up um, and we can level off the ground a bit more um, that will get a lot more sun than it currently does and I think it will be a good place for keeping stuff that needs to start to be hardened off we might paint the frame as well maybe one day I'm being attacked by something from above <laughs> I feel like something is throwing something out of the tree at me um, I don't think it's probably being picked up on the camera though and then we get to our no dig beds so these are pretty much all broad beans and last time I showed you I think this one had a covering on and maybe the rest either hadn't been planted or they had some uh, some fleece over them well I took the fleece off briefly because they have now started to come up however after we took the fleece off the birds started pulling them out so we've had to cover them back up again but I can show you that there are definitely broad beans under there which is very exciting uh, so there's some under there I did a few more here and then these ones are also coming up I believe uh, not quite as interesting to look at under there, some weeds. But there are some broad beans. Oh yeah, there's one. Um, quite a few got pulled out and then they wilted because we didn't water them in time. And there should be some more coming up under here as well. Somewhere. He says, oh, maybe not. Yeah, there you go. There are some coming up under there too. So these covers are going to stay on for a little bit longer until they get just a little bit bigger but so the birds can't pull them out. Um, but it does make it quite difficult to water them, so maybe I'll have to change it for the net ones instead of the fleece ones, especially as it's been quite warm anyway. Uh, these pots are just from the house, so they were in front of the house. Um, they were looking quite pretty, but again, because we were moving, we've just brought a lot of stuff down here just to keep it out of the way. And then if we go around towards the greenhouse, there's some more daffodils which are starting to go over. They may be going over just due to lack of water, because there are still some okay, and obviously some in the other pots are fine. Um, but I haven't been particularly good at keeping on top of the watering in this one. These ones are yet to come out. I think they're meant to be white. And then these, yeah, they're all starting to go over. And then these are just some of our raspberries, which we need to find a home for. Lots more rubbish. Greenhouse is looking a bit more interesting. I've actually just taken some stuff out and put it in the ground, um, which I'll show you in a little while. But um, we have got some sunflowers. So I was a bit nervous about doing sunflowers because it was quite early. I did them sometime in February and we have had some frosts overnight but they seem to have coped quite well in the greenhouse so uh, I have done some more. Some didn't come up so I've actually just put some more seeds into these ones. Oh there's another one back there, there which I didn't realise. <laughs> uh, so I might need to put another seed in there because that one obviously hasn't come up either. But uh, that's pretty hopeful. Um, so I've done, yeah so like I said I put some more seeds in here but then I've also done some more seeds in here. So I've done two rows of sunflowers in here and then I've done a couple of rows of sweet peas and then I've done a couple of rows of nasturtiums as well um, just didn't I mean I haven't done loads and we've got loads more seed so if they get killed off by frost or anything I know the sweet peas won't but if the nasturtiums or the sunflowers get killed off by frost we've got plenty more seed that we can do it with and uh, there's just a lot of other stuff in here that we need to tidy up really I think this is all just weeds this is meant to be the plant that's in here but that's just completely dead now some leeks which we never did anything with this uh, was meant to be cuttings of the grape that's in here, but they didn't take, probably because we didn't keep them watered, or they were left outside. These are meant to be bluebells that we're trying to grow from seed. They just haven't come up. Either they're getting eaten, or it's just been not the right conditions, or we haven't watered them enough, but they haven't come up. So the seeds that are left, I think we're just going to throw them in the wildflower patch and just hope that they do what they're meant to do. We could also buy some bulbs, of course. These sweet peas, they were recently pinched out, but they have recently really shot off. They're quite tall now, so these probably need to go in the ground soon. The ones on the edge don't seem to have done as well, uh, but that's probably just due to lack of watering. Yeah, these are quite dry. Behind that is meant to be, again, wild garlic grown from seed, but once again, they just didn't come up. The peas that are a bit of a catastrophe, these ones haven't worked out so well, um, although I can probably just eat these <laughs> as they are for pea shoots. Um, but this is all meant to be full of peas, but they kind of rotted off, or they got eaten by the rodents that are in here. But... The other peas were fine, so I'm not sure 100% that it was the rodents that had them. And then we've got some brassicas here, which just never went in the ground. These were purple smoke and broccoli. And although this one's just bolted, um, I have actually been eating these. I've just been eating them raw because they're quite tender. Oh, I didn't show you the purple smoke and broccoli that we've got back there, but uh, I have harvested most of that anyway. We've got our potatoes here. We've got some in the ground, um, but we haven't put them all in the ground yet. We just haven't had time. This is a little bit later than we would like to put them in the ground. Normally we do them in March, but now it's going to be April. We might get time to do a few before we go on holiday, but I'm um, not so sure that we will. Uh, but it's fine. 
Doing them a bit later will obviously mean a later harvest, but it will also mean that um, if there's any frosts, we are uh, less likely to get hit by them, which is nice. The jasmine at the back there, it is still alive. There is some green on it, but it is not happy at all. Um, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen with that. We've tried keeping it in the greenhouse to perk it up, but it hasn't liked it at all. The wisteria though, that is now starting to show some signs of life, which is really lovely. Very excited about this one. We'll probably put that back in the ground on 79, at least for this year, to try and train it over the seating area. And hopefully it will be fairly moisture tolerant and won't mind being flooded a few times. We'll just have to see. At the back, these are some of the herbs and stuff that I was growing at home. This is oregano. It just hasn't done much. I think I might have to put this on the ground so I can water it a bit better. Um, I'm gonna do that now. Next to the very sad looking microgreens, which we've given up on. Next to that is some leeks. They, these took a really long time to germinate, but they now have actually finally germinated. These ones have had really patchy germination, even though they're bigger, which is a bit weird because these were sown later than these ones. Uh, but we've just had none germinate in the middle <laughs> three sections, but the end ones seem to be okay. I can probably put these on the ground. So this one is quite nicely watered. And then we've got some thyme. So this is also looking a bit crispy. Uh, yeah, that's quite dry as well, so that's going to need a water. And then at the end, we have some rosemary as well. Uh, by my foot, here is the last of the pre-sprouted broad beans that we need to get in the ground. Now, these are in the really big root trainers, which are actually quite difficult to get in the ground, so I don't really like using them, but they do hold the water really well. And obviously, they give the beans a little bit more room to grow as well, so they do tend to look a bit healthier in these ones. But they're a lot harder to get in the ground because you've got to dig right down into the ground to be able to get all of the roots in the ground properly. So they're a bit of a pain, but they do work out quite well. So looking forward to getting these in the ground, just gonna be a bit of a faff. Oh yeah, we've got our rose back there as well, and the campsis, which Sergio thinks isn't dead. And so I've still been watering it. Oh no, we do have some life on it, that's really cool. I was not expecting to see any growth on this at all this year, especially not this high up. So Sergio was right, this is alive. So we should have more hope. It just looked so crispy and it didn't look alive at all. Two more sets of sweet peas. These ones were looking a bit ropey. These ones are looking really nice and healthy. These ones actually haven't been pinched out yet. So we probably need to do that soon and then get them in the ground. The Ailsa Craig onions, which really need pricking out and putting on. Um, I just hate pricking out and putting things on. So that's Sergio's job. And then next to that is the cauliflowers. These are actually picked up, have actually picked up a lot better than I thought they would because quite a lot of them got eaten. Um, but the ones that haven't got eaten are looking really healthy so another job definitely as soon as we're back uh, needs to be to pot these on and then the strawberries underneath that are also looking very happy so looking forward to getting those in the ground somewhere or in a pot somewhere as well another rose um, oh this is a very filthy label <laughs> um, this one is well a climbing rose uh, so again we just need to try and find the right place for it but we are planning to oh there's quite a lot of green fly on there Oof. Um, so we're trying to find the right place for it. I think I might take that out of the greenhouse. And then next to that, we just have the grapes. Oh, and the black currants as well, which we also need to try and find a home for. Just gonna move that there so the green fly can't attack everything in the greenhouse. So that is the greenhouse. It's so warm in there, even the auto vent is opening. We are really, really lucky with the weather at the moment. And then under here somewhere, there's also some leaks. <laughs> Uh, they are actually starting to pick up now, so I'm leaving those in, even though they're in a bit of a weird place. Down here, we haven't done a lot, although Sergio has been raking the surface a lot to try and get off a lot of the weeds and the green algae stuff that has been growing when it's been flooded. On this side though, Sergio has put some potatoes in the ground, just some of the main crop, I think maybe two rows of them in here. Uh, we're planning to do the, the rest in this bed and also some in bags. I have been convinced by Sergio's dad to do some in the ground because apparently the soil will be really good here for them. I much prefer doing them in bags because it's much easier to harvest. However, they do use a lot more compost that way and we do have a lot. So I don't mind doing some in the ground as long as Sergio is happy to do the harvesting because I absolutely hate digging in the ground to harvest potatoes and you never get them all out. So that can be Sergio's job if he wants to do it. I'm quite happy to do them in the bags, which is what we did up this end last year and it worked out quite well. So maybe we'll do half and half this year. In this hole, this is the hole that we're checking the groundwater level. Sergio has dug a little bit deeper in here and you can see that there is some water in there, which is a little bit concerning because it's not that far under the ground. Um, but hopefully 
uh, it won't go up any higher than that when it rains. We did have some heavy rain recently, especially when we had that weird sand rain that undid all of our hard work with cleaning the greenhouse that we moved, um, and it didn't flood from there. We didn't even have any in the seating area, which usually is the first thing to flood. So um, I think we might be okay for the rest of the season, but famous last words. In here, we did have some frog spawn. Uh, yeah, there's still some frog spawn in here. It might be quite difficult to see now because the sun is starting to set, but there is some frog spawn in there and I do occasionally see some life. Here we've just started putting some old pots as some sort of habitat for, po uh, for frogs to hide out in. Um, we didn't. We realised that we didn't really have anything here. There's not even any grass or anything for them to hibernate in or to hide in away from things that might want to eat them and obviously give them a place to mate. So we realised that obviously while it was all flooded here, um, it was a perfect habitat for them because there was some really long grass, there was lots of bed coverings like that uh, on our plot neighbours' beds there that they were enjoying hiding under. So we thought we need to spend a bit more time building up a habitat here. So it's a really nice way actually to use old pots. So they're just it's just a broken old chimney pot thing. Um, so it's just upturned and it just gives them some place to hide under. And I think we'll try and make it look a bit nicer. So we maybe still put some plants in there, uh, flatten these out a little bit and put some logs and stuff in there. And who knows, we may even get some newts. That would be quite nice. There's nothing in this bed yet. Although again, Sergio has been doing a nice job <clears throat> of trying to make that look a bit tidier. It actually looks really good um, compared to what it did a few days ago. And then on this side, it's uh, looking a little bit greener, which is quite nice and not green because of algae or anything. So uh, these are the Hurst green shaft peas that have been doing quite nicely in the greenhouse, but they just started to get a little bit crispy at the bottom from drying out. So I thought it was time to put them in the ground. So that's what these ones are. They're all Hurst green shaft. And then these ones, these here, sorry, these are uh, the old prunings from the black currant bush that we uh, pruned last year at the end of last year so they're serving as our pea sticks on this side at least anyway next to that we have some broad beans that were pre-sprouted in modules most of those look okay this one got pulled out by birds yesterday which is really annoying so it's looking a bit wilted and some of these other ones on the edge are looking a little bit sad but most of them are quite healthy and quite happy they only went in the ground yesterday i think so they should start to settle in and uh, flourish pretty soon i hope and then next to that we have some not so good looking peas so these are grown from saved seed uh, they were a little bit leggy anyway um, and definitely a little bit late going out because they are quite long but i've just been eating these uh, in as pea shoots in the greenhouse so every time i come down i just pick off some of the shoots and eat them um, but they should have gone in the ground a little bit long a uh, little bit of time ago they are saved seed from Blauschocker peas, so these are the ones that I don't really like the taste of the actual peas. They're okay, they just don't really taste of anything, but the pea shoots themselves, they taste quite nice. They do taste really strongly of peas, so I don't mind uh, using those for pea shoots. And then for the pea sticks here, we're just using old, sorry about the tilling behind me, uh, we're just using old Christmas tree branches, and they are actually a lot better for pea sticks because they obviously have the, like, the fanned out thing. So uh, historically what we've done is cut off the branches of our Christmas trees, put them in the compost bins so that all the needles fall off into the compost bin and then dig out the actual branches themselves and use them as pea sticks after. Nothing in this bed apart from some guttering that's come from the greenhouse, um, which we will obviously put back when we've moved the troughs around. And then down here is our strawberries from last year that are also starting to perk up quite nicely. I'm not sure if we needed to do the straw to keep them happy over winter but it's obviously worked or at least it hasn't had any detrimental effect on them at all uh, there is a space now in the middle though for another plant um, and we also probably need to top up this compost just a little bit then we get to the second half of plot 79 where the seating area still looks pretty gross <laughs> we have our palm grass thing there which keeps falling over so it's now tied up uh, the bench is usable but it's still looking pretty gross haven't bothered putting the cover on this or anything yet uh, just because we weren't super sure that it wasn't going to flood again but it looks like we're going to be okay so i think for just this year i'll probably put this seating uh, this flooring back down just to cover up some of this horrible mess but it, this needs a good sweep first before i can do that it's still quite damp under here because this uh, concrete under there is really quite porous and doesn't dry out very quickly at all and then this is where our big greenhouse was, um, but we've now moved it. Uh, the water butts still need moving, but they're almost completely empty now. We just need to undo the bungs that are on the side there 
and uh, empty the water out and take them round. And then we also need to level off uh, some more slabs on plot 12 for these to go in, but the space for them in front of the greenhouse has already been made. We just need to actually do the job of moving them around now, and then we can sort, uh, sort out the downpipes that we took off and put them on uh, the, new, the, the greenhouse now that it's on plot 12. So that's that, and then this old greenhouse frame, that was the one that was on plot 12. And uh, we've decided that we're gonna have it, the door for the other, greenhouse was actually pointing this way when we had it but because this one's smaller and almost the width of this greenhouse is almost the same sorry let me start that again the length of this smaller greenhouse is almost the same as the width of the big greenhouse that we've moved so if we turn it on its side it still takes up roughly the same amount of space across the plot uh, but it just means that the door will be here hopefully out of the prevailing wind uh, it just won't go back as far so it'll only go back to here rather than to here but we'll still get the beds either side, um, which will allow us to, um, which will still allow us to have the same amount of space either side and split up the plot quite nicely. We still need to move uh, the slabs and clean those as well. And then we get to the back of plot 79, where we have actually got a little bit of life. So the compost bins, nothing has changed about those. I haven't moved those yet. Um, but we have got some comfrey coming up, which is nice. Um, so these are actually looking a little bit healthier than they did the other day as well. Uh, they were looking quite yellow, um, but they have now started to perk up a bit. And I think we've also got some bulbs coming up in here as well. Yeah, there's some coming up here. And uh, there is some more. Yeah, there's another one there. I think they might be daffodils or hyacinths potentially. And then again, I've also been putting some yellow rattle here to try and deal with the grass a little bit. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to put some sunflowers down this end as well. But yeah, that is plot 79 uh, in the middle of March. There we go, plot 79 at the end, no, not quite. Yeah, at the end of March actually, sorry, not the middle of March. It is now the end of March, nearly my birthday, which is nice. Um, yeah, there has been some changes and there is some greenery and it is starting to look a lot better. Still a little bit nervous um, because we did actually flood again in May last year because the water company turned off their pumps for maintenance at the end of May. Yeah, end of May, I think it was. So still a little bit nervous about that, especially every time it rains. But we can't worry about it too much. The good thing is the things that are here are starting to look good. We just need to do a lot of tidying and uh, the potatoes and the beans and stuff will fill up the space really quickly. And I'm really looking forward to getting our pumpkins in the ground as well as soon as possible really, obviously looking out for those frost dates, um, but the Atlantic Giants have actually been sown now, they're at home, um, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, that is it for today's video. I do apologize if that telling noise was too noisy. I hope you could hear what I was saying, um, but apologies. If not, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, and it will be a lesson learned for next time. If it is a little bit too loud, I'll just have to postpone the tour. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Thank you for joining me. So from me, Sergio and Poppy, take the very best of care and I hope we get to see you in the next video. Bye. Hello there. Welcome back to the, oh no, it's not good enough. <laughs> well, it's time for, nope, it's no good. <laughs> Hi there. Welcome back to the Auburn allotment. Nope, that's far too energetic. <laughs>